Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, news is breaking that Saul Alvarez is on the verge of fighting James Kirkland. The situation is fluid because apparently the people behind Saul Alvarez and behind the network want to figure out when exactly Floyd Mayweather is fighting next. Right? They don't want their fight to be on the same date as, let's say, a possible fight between Floyd and a Manny Pacquiao or a Miguel Cotto. Right? So this fight might be moved around. Let me just point out, if you're going to fight James Kirkland, then now is the time to fight him. Right? Understand, we're talking about a fight for May of 2015, close to the middle of the year. Just understand that James Kirkland did not fight in 2014. Right? Understand, James Kirkland hasn't fought much of late. The classic Alfredo and Gulo fight was three and a half years ago, folks. His fight against Carlos Molina, by the time this fight goes off, will have been more than three years earlier. Right? His fight against Glenn Tapia took place in 2013, and that fight didn't even make it a full six rounds. Right? Now understand, boxing's a perception game. No one cares about a fighter's managerial problems. We don't look back and say, fighter A beat fighter B when fighter B had managerial problems, right? We don't focus on what's going on in the rest of the fighter's life, right? No one looks back and says, oh, you know what? Fighter A beat fighter B, but fighter B was going through a divorce at the time, right? All the record books are gonna reflect is going to be Saul Alvarez against James Kirkland, right? So if you want James Kirkland's scalp on your resume, the best time to fight him is when he's been out of the ring for about a year and a half, which is what he will be out of the ring for by the time we get to May, right? Now, all of that said, I don't believe the play here is to pick a side. I don't. I believe the play here is to take both guys by KO. Right? Understand, James Kirkland is a smotherer. In other words, he's not a mid-range hooker. He's not mid-range anything. He's not long-range anything. He wants to get inside on you. He wants to lean on you. And he wants to rub you out. Right? He doesn't want you in the middle of the ring. He wants to have the fight end up over at the side of the ring. Right? Don't talk to Kirkland about defense. He doesn't know what that is. What he does is he smothers you. And he sets a pace that you can't match, right? He's running red lights. He's doing things the wrong way. It's all unorthodox with him. It's bad enough he's a southpaw, right? So you're fighting him, you're having a problem landing a jab, the angles don't quite line up, and then the guy is fighting at a pace where during the fight, the opponent suddenly realizes, hey, this guy isn't intending to make it possible for either of us to go the distance, right? For most fighters, I believe they go into training camp and they have the mindset of, hey, okay, there's a tacit agreement, right? Neither of us is gonna fight at a pace where the fight necessarily 
can't go the distance. Right? In James Kirkland's case, there is no such agreement. The numbers are jaw-dropping. Against Glenn Tapia, right? Just understand that Kirkland averaged more than a hundred punches thrown per round in that fight. Think about it, right? Let me say, Kirkland's not a jabber. Much of the shots are hard power shots. Understand, too, Kirkland's so close to you that when he's not hitting you with punches, he's hitting you with forearms, right? This is kind of like Rocky Marciano, right? The pace is murderous. The guy is up on you. He's willing to trade. He's willing to be hit. I'm guessing fighters in the ring with him are looking at him and are thinking, are you serious? Right? It's all out aggression. Now let me say this. Canelo. How much do you really know about his stamina? He's gone the distance with multiple fighters, right? Went the distance with Shane Mosley. I think that fight's a great bellwether, right? Went the distance with Shane Mosley. Went the distance with Floyd Mayweather. Went the distance with Austin Trout, right? Canelo's a guy unbeaten. Went the distance with Eris Landy Lara. He's unbeaten. He has shown in multiple high-profile elite fights, right, fights against elite competition, that he can go the distance. The question is, can he go the distance against a James Kirkland-type fighter, right? Floyd Mayweather, Austin Trout. These guys never really stepped on the gas against Canelo. Like James Kirkland will. Right? There was more boxing going on in those matches. Right? A lot of jabs, a lot of boxing. There's more boxing going on in those matches than the fighting James Kirkland is going to throw down. Right? Everslandy Lara. I thought he beat Canelo. He gives up the pocket to Canelo. He's fighting a movement fight, right? He's out of the pocket. He's fighting a fight where he's moving, landing, countering, staying outside. You think that's the fight that James Kirkland's going to fight? You think James Kirkland is going to give up the pocket to Saul Alvarez? Let me say this, too. Understand, stamina is James Kirkland's game, right? I know he has the big 80-odd percent KO ratio. I know he fights in a way where he's basically saying, look, I'm going to make it impossible for this fight to go several rounds. But understand the way this guy trains, right? He's one of the hardest trainers in the sport of boxing. He and his trainer, Ann Wolf, really conduct a military-style boot camp before boxing matches. Understand the secret to Kirkland's success is the fact that Kirkland shows up really like a Marine would show up after going through boot camp, right? Kirkland's not in there taking off minutes of rounds. There's no off switch. Even when Kirkland is getting his butt kicked, the Alfredo Angulo fight, right? Kirkland's up and Kirkland's trying to throw punches right after getting up off the canvas. 
right? The kind of fighter who throws Kirkland off, and let's face it, he lost this fight, is a Carlos Molina, who when Kirkland comes inside, Molina welcomes him inside, right? Because Molina himself is a master inside, right? Molina can have a elbow between you and him. He's hitting you. When you tie him up, he has a hand free. He's hitting you. He's turning. He's tossing. So when you come in, it's like you're a bull approaching a matador. Folks, those skills take careers to develop. Canelo's not going to have those skills in May. He's just not. He's not going to know how to deal with James Kirkland inside. Nor is Kirkland going to learn the patience that it would take to make sure that he avoids Canelo's punches. Don't be fooled by the pretty face. Canelo's left hook. The one he knocked Carlos Baldemir unconscious with while Baldemir was standing up. That's one of the best punches in boxing. If Canelo lands, there'll be no plan B for James Kirkland. Right? This isn't the kind of fight, the Ishida fight, where James Kirkland gets knocked down, gets back up. No, no. This the Alfredo Angulo fight, Kirkland gets knocked down, gets back up. No, 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 no. Right? Canelo hits like Vladimir Klitschko. He hits like David Hay. In other words, if he lands, as I like to say, the world changes. Right? The world changes. Right? Let me blatantly steal from F. Scott Fitzgerald. Right? There's no second act in Canelo fights once he lands flush. Right? The fight's over. At that point, it's time really, figuratively speaking, for an autopsy of his opponent. Right? So here's what I see happening. Because this fight, to me, comes down to stamina. Kirkland's going to come in. Canelo's not going to bum-rush him like Glenn Tapia. By the way, Tapia then understood that he was in the ring with a Marine type. Right? Kirkland survives the onslaught, and here's the problem. You bum-rush Kirkland. You're up on Kirkland. You're emptying the gun on Kirkland. And then you find out the other guy has a gun. And the other guy's prepared to empty his gun, too. So even after your invasion, right, dies down, and you say, okay, well, this invasion didn't work. Let me breathe for a second. Then you find out, no, the invasion's still going on. It's just coming back at you. Right? Canelo's not going to run across the ring at James Kirkland. He knows better. He can just look at the film of Kirkland's last fight to figure out what happened. He can look at the Alfredo and Gulo fight and figure out what happens. Right? In that fight, Kirkland gets dropped. What happens? Kirkland gets off the canvas. He's still trying to throw punches. Right? What I think is going to happen is there's going to be a moment in this fight where one of two things happen. Either Canelo lands flush. If he does, I personally feel the fight's over. Kirkland might get up. Right? He'll be a shell of himself. Right? The fight will be over. It'll be like Canelo against Jose Cito Lopez. Right? You understood that that fight was over before it was over. Or something else might happen. This is why I'm not taking Canelo. The bullets start flying. Canelo's on a wave. Then Canelo tries to take the minute off of every round as has been his practice. 
right? He gets a little bit tired, and then he wants to just hang out a little bit, go to the balcony, look at the view, look at the crowd, enjoy himself a little bit. And he's going to find out that he's in against a Marine type. Right? Kirkland's going to be fighting 180 seconds of every round. Understand, that's his game. Kirkland's going to be up on Canelo. Canelo's going to find out he has nowhere to go. Right? The way I'm playing this is to take both guys by KO. I'm not fooling around with an over-under. Why? Because I want all 12 rounds. Let me say this, too. Neither of these guys is fighting for a title in this one. Right? So you need to look hard at the number of rounds for this bout. I'm making this prediction premised on the idea that this fight's going to be a 12-round fight. If they decide to make it a 10-round fight, then don't follow this video. Right? I'm still expecting the fight to end inside of 10. But you and I know the world is different. If you're tired at the start of the ninth round and you know you still have four rounds to go versus knowing you only have two rounds to go, right? Let me also say, too, that the fight's supposed to be in the great state of Texas. Now, you remember when Canelo was in against Austin Trout. And you remember how, when they entered the ring, the crowd loved Canelo. He was the cash cow in that fight. Austin Trout from New Mexico was clearly the visitor. Right? The crowd loved Canelo, and Canelo then showed us some boxing skills that he hadn't shown before. He looked good at times in that fight. Let me point out, just so people know where I'm coming from, I thought Canelo lost that fight. Right? Forget my opinion. You look at the CompuBox numbers, cover the names of the fighters, just pick the guy based on the CompuBox numbers who you think won the fight, and then look at the names of the fighters. Right? Understand the dynamic's going to be different this time. Right? First, James Kirkland's from Texas. Right? Kirkland should have a lot of folks at that Alamo Dome. Right? You can imagine casual fans in Texas are going to pick up the paper and say, oh, what? James Kirkland is back? Kirkland's from Texas? Let's say Kirkland's going to have his folk out there. Right? The second thing you need to look at is to change perception on Canelo. Before he was a darling. Right? Good looking guy. He wanted to fight the very best. All of us understood that he was trying to get a fight with Floyd Mayweather. We respected him for that. Right? Fight fans love guys who are trying to fight the best. Who believe they're the best and are willing to risk unbeaten records to get it. Right? At the time Canelo entered the ring, he hadn't gotten the gifts. He has received since then. Right now, I know there's nobody out there booing Canelo. Right? We still love him. I have the deepest respect for the fact that this guy has fought Floyd, has fought Arislandi Lara, is now about to fight James Kirkland, wanted to fight Miguel Cotto. Right? That's the hard road. This guy's trying to take it. I have the utmost respect for that. But here's what I think. I think he got a gift against Austin Trout. Right? You might as well have had reindeer, a sled, and Santa sitting in the judge's box. Right? I thought he got a gift. I thought there was no way any judge who was actually watching the fight 
could have given him a draw on the scorecard for his fight against Floyd Mayweather. I thought that was a gift. I thought he got a gift against Arislandi Lara. Right? Lara's moving. Lara's countering. Canelo, you know, looks stuck in first gear for long stretches of that fight. Right? The problem with getting gifts is that it boomerangs. Eventually, the crowd's not fully on your side, right? People hear about the fact that a guy was given the nod in a close fight, and then they start to question the guy. Then they start to go back through your background, and they start to say, whoa, wait a moment, how did Canelo get that first title? Which champion did he beat? Right, to blatantly steal from Louis Farrakhan, right? Did he win it in the ring? Or was he selected? Right? The Alfredo Angulo fights the tip off. Canelo wins that fight, no question about it. I was watching the fight. I thought to myself, you know what? This opponent looks like Alfredo Angulo. But isn't Alfredo Angulo. Let's face it. The Angulo who shows up in that fight is not the Angulo who fought Arislandi Lara. Right? Something's going on with Angulo. Who knows what it is? Right? Forget my opinion. Juan Manuel Marquez has that opinion as well and expressed it on his popular television show, right? But in that Angulo fight, even as Canelo is winning the fight, right, you notice that there were moments in that fight where suddenly Canelo's taking minutes of rounds off. Canelo's back actually touches the ropes. Angulo's in front of him. Now keep in mind, Canelo hits Angulo with hellacious shots. The ref sees enough, he steps in, he stops the bout. Okay, fair enough. Listen to the crowd at that moment. The crowd understood that even though Canelo was winning the fight, as I said, look, I had Canelo winning that fight by a wide margin on my scorecard. I'm not saying he got a gift. But what's interesting is that when they stopped that fight, many in the crowd booed. Now understand, they wouldn't have booed Julio Cesar Chavez because they know that guy's a warrior and if he's beaten your butt for several rounds, you had no chance of coming back. Right? You don't, you don't boo that guy. If Vladimir Klitschko beats up an opponent, then the ref has seen enough and steps in. He doesn't get booed because we understand. You know, Vlad was winning the fight. <laughs> Vlad just hit the guy with hard shots. Right? The referee's saving the opponent's life here. The crowd booed the stoppage in the Canelo fight. Why? Because I believe the crowd has doubts about Canelo's stamina. I believe Canelo's image has changed from the ring walk into the Austin Trout fight to now. I think all of us are starting to realize that Canelo, right, is more vulnerable than we thought and that some of his fights are photo finishes, right? In fact, it's worse than that. Let me be the cynic here. I don't know how you get the scorecards in the Austin Trout fight off of that fight. In other words, it's one thing to say, I think Canelo won the fight. It's another to say, I think Canelo won the fight by this margin. Right? So I've seen this before. Oscar De La Hoya, early in his career, won some close decisions. Right? Over guys like 
Colonel Whitaker. Then when he fought Felix Trinidad, and make no mistake, before Oscar starts dancing around the ring for the last three rounds of that fight, he has Trinidad beaten. Right? He's, he's won that fight. His corner thought he was so far ahead, they said, hey, go ahead, dance around the ring. Right? You know what? The judges looked at Oscar, and I believe because Oscar had been awarded so many close decisions before that fight, I think the judges were a bit skeptical on Oscar De La Hoya. Dare I say, there's blowback on fighters who we feel have won too many close decisions. Right? The public mood changes. No one's going to openly say, hey man, you know, I think Canelo has been pampered by sanctioning bodies, right, by his title opportunities and by the decisions in these fights. But I believe people kind of think that way, right? Canelo fights Alfredo Angulo, tough opponent, right? And you mean to tell me in a fight in which Canelo's clearly winning that the crowd boos the stoppage? Now, I know I'm going to hear from some in YouTube Nation who are going to say, hey, the crowd booed the stoppage because it was a great fight and they wanted more rounds of it. <laughs> okay, fine, right? Uh, was the fight that great? Didn't it look like something was wrong with Angulo that night, that there was some level of his explosiveness and his tenacity that was missing that night? You know, to draw an analogy, that would be like watching James Kirkland and suddenly he's missing his aggressiveness and his explosiveness, right? Angulo's not even pursuing Canelo like he did other opponents. Now, I understand there's another school of thought that the reason he's not pursuing Canelo is he felt some of the punches, right? Didn't want to get close to the stove. Stove was a little bit too hot. So he's not in there cooking dinner like he would against an inferior opponent. Okay, understood. I just invite you, the viewer, to look at those fights. So I believe Canelo is starting to look, even though he is a warrior who has been in the ring, with, think about it, Mayweather, Angulo, Lara, right? Even though he's been in the ring with tough guys, Austin Trout, when Trout's unbeaten, right? I think there's a growing perception of Canelo as a bit of a spoiled brat, right? I suspect that had Canelo signed to fight Miguel Cotto, I believe the line would have swung in Cotto's favor. I think Cotto's viewed differently than Canelo. I would argue had Canelo signed to fight, plug in the name, Gennady Golovkin, I think he'd be a decided underdog, right? Because I think we privately doubt him, right? Fancy, it's the fourth round, and there's Saul Alvarez right, taking a breather. There'll be no breathers against James Kirkland. I can't pick a side. And this is a fight where Kirkland hasn't even fought for a year and a half, right? I can't pick a side. I'm going to pick distance. I like both guys by KO. That's how I see this one. I'll be shocked, assuming the fight's 12 rounds. Right? Assuming the fight's 12 rounds, I'll be shocked if this fight makes it to the 12th round. I'd be shocked, right? Because I just think that Canelo doesn't move that well. He's a guy who likes to go flat-footed. Kirkland doesn't like to give up the pocket to an opponent. Kirkland has to be giddy at the thought of Canelo trying to take, you know, parts of rounds off. Let's just say I don't view Canelo like I view Bernard Hopkins, right? Against Joe Calzaghe, a high-volume guy, right? Hopkins, 
knew how to take parts of rounds off, and then, of course, to stretch that fight out, had to pretend he was hit with a low blow and all this other stuff. You think Canelo's that savvy? I don't. I'm expecting a stoppage here. That's how I see it. I, I can't pick a side. But that's okay, because Vegas will give me odds on the stoppage. I'm going to take both guys by KO. Let me hear from you. If you feel I'm hating on Canelo, if you feel I'm hating on Kirkland, right? If you feel that, you know, Canelo clearly beat Austin Trout, Erislandi Lara, right? If you feel Canelo earned that first title, right? Keep in mind, too, there's some fights out there that the boxing hardcore hasn't seen. I'm still trying to look at a full film of his first fight against Miguel Vasquez, right? Understand, the controversial Canelo fights, some of them aren't even on film, right? You just read press reports, and you understand, wow, he was in against a tough opponent. Then you look at the opponent in other fights, and you say, how, how did Canelo beat him, right? This is a tough fight. It's a real fight. I think it's a toss-up. I think it ends early. That's how I'm betting it. Let me hear how you're betting it and why. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.